We will get recording. All right. Awesome. Happy Friday to you, everybody. Welcome to our Fierce Friday, February 12th, 2021. I am Rebecca Johns. I am one of the council members for the Million Mom Movement Council. I'd like to welcome all of those who are here with me today on the council. And on behalf of Stephanie Dawn, who is on a healing sabbatical, our chairperson, I'm happy to fill in for her with my sisters in her absence. I'd like to honor Rachel Quayle, our operations manager at corporate. Thank you, Rachel. She's behind the scenes running all the buttons and making this possible for us today. But also my sisters who are already on, Carmelo Velardi, Jody Parker, Nayeva Flory, and of course, Taz Ferreira will be joining us momentarily. If you are in the council, a member of the council, would you please drop a C, drop a C down there and let us know and let everyone see us so that we can be identified. You know, you guys are welcome to connect with us follow our social media. All of us are on um, Facebook, Instagram. Some of us are on LinkedIn, MeWe, Clubhouse. Child, there's so many of them now. I don't even like, Jody, what are we, I mean, Nyeva, well, like we, we need to make a list, y'all. I don't even, I don't even know how to find people anymore. Uh, we need to leave power shake crumbs as a trail everywhere we go so people know <laughs> how to find us. That'd be cool, Nayeva. Can we create a little thing about virtual power shake crumbs to leave as a trail in the Million Mile Movement? I don't know. Leadership leaves clues. Maybe we can leave power shake crumbs. So today and inside of the context for this month, we are honoring fiercely loving the self. Fiercely loving the self. And when we love the self, isn't it so much easier to then share from the overflow of that to other people. I read recently a quote that said, we're sometimes so busy seeking to receive kindness, compassion, and generosity, and trying to control and discipline people to get that, when really, if we work on the discipline and care and love of self, the control of self, we actually find that we have the compassion, kindness, and generosity within us to pour out. We are what we are seeking. We just may need to consider a different route of thought of how to access it. And so um, obviously this month we are sharing the family nutrition pack. We are joining together, kicking off on the 15th. Jody Parker will be live in the Million Mom Movement official page, walking us through the launch of how to sprinkle those important superfoods in. And then on the 19th, we're going to be coming to you with some support on the nutrition and recipes and all kinds of gooey stuff, self-care. But part of how we care for ourselves is through our relationships. Yes. And as many of us here on this call can attest, when our relationships are at a lull, it pulls us to a lull. When our relationships are thriving, it allows us to thrive. And it's symbiotic. It goes back and forth. And so today we are bringing to the conversation sacred relationships. Sacred relationships. If you are someone who would be empowered you already were thinking, man, I could really use a boost in how I honor myself and my relationships. Drop a one. If this has already kind of been in your space, like you're out to level up partnerships, out to be more conscious of them, out to be co-collaborative, co-creative, deepening, enriching your partnerships, wanting to impact, to bring the best of you, but also to invoke and provoke the best of others. Because aren't we all in this movement because we know that alone doesn't exist, right? Aren't we in this movement? Aren't we part of this, the Purium economy and the Million Mom movement? Because there's no such thing as me without you, right? And so conscious relationships, to have the power, to have the language, to have some tools to create a life that is abundant and rich by enriching consciously who we be and how we participate in relationships. That is the name of the game today on Fierce Friday because my sisters and I know that not only 
is the relationship to self important the relationship to other but the relationship in this business how do we move the million mom movement forward if we're not consciously creating solid relationships so from your personal life and your spiritual life and your romantic life and in your business life relationships are what make the world go round and being conscious in them as much as possible really does matter so you know the million mom movement we are a grassroots organization we are here to educate empower raise awareness and activate all of you the constituents in the field to be wise consumers conscious consumers understanding things about big ag the food system health wellness your part in it and how to not just be a passive participant but an activist voting with your dollars at the very least and if you really feel called joining us in the purium economy and becoming a brand partner with purium health products i've been a brown a brown i i don't know why i've said i'm brown i don't i haven't been brown but i've been a proud <laughs> can't be flawless all the time jody parker ding um <laughs> laugh with me people laugh with me okay i've been a proud consumer and brand partner with period health products in september of 2014 it's okay it's okay to laugh at me you guys it's okay i can I'm, i can handle it i can handle it i do it every day i promise don't take conscious partnership relationship tip number one don't take stuff so seriously okay don't take it so seriously uh, but i've been proud to be part of this movement for almost seven years and my sisters here are bringing together um a delicious conversation. However, before we get started, I want to take us to the heart of who we are as a mission by having Carmela Velarde presence for us, our pledge. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for that laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so brown, to, is, brown to bring it to you, sister. I'm brown to bring it to you. <laughs> It is a great form of medicine and a great way to start off the call. So did you know that Rebecca Johns was formerly on stage as a comedian? <laughs> In case you didn't know, it brings a former life, a former life. It's a true story. She's not lying to you. Yeah. <laughs> so our allegiance to our movement, what is it? What are our words? How can we join the movement? and take this allegiance. Well, you go onto our website and you can see it plainly there, but the pledge, the pledge is I pledge to defend the health of my family and of myself. I pledge to reject GMOs, artificial ingredients, trans fats and overprocessed foods. I pledge to educate myself, read labels and lead by example. I understand that my actions today Will positively impact oh, there it is will positively impact the health of future generations i am committed to sharing this mission until we are a million moms strong and really what you can do once you do to take this pledge and join us online you can start a superfood business you can lock arms with us and hashtag I am the million mom movement on your social media, you can join our website. So take this alliance with us and I pass the word. That is awesome. Thank you so much. And the heart of our movement really began out of a commitment originally from moms, but that mom has evolved now, MOM, that movement of many has evolved, but it really began with the heart of moms wanting to get clean food to their children. And so I would really love if uh, Nayeva Flory spoke to us. Um, she has such a way of articulating the dilemma of glyphosate and pesticides, toxic pesticide residue in the world, but also our action of a petition to make a difference. Please, Nayeva, take it away. Thank you so much. So um, I've shared the story many times about how in Hawaii, we are the ground place for GMO seed crops and hybrid seeds. But today I'm going to share a little bit different story. I'm coming to you from beautiful Mexico, and I wanted to give you a different point of view. So in Mexico, they are actually working on banning glyphosate by 2024. That's super exciting because 
Mexico obviously makes a ton of their products from corn. Their tortilla chips, their tortillas, and so much other, you know, everything's made out of masa down here. So um, I thought that was really interesting and I wanted to go ahead and let you all know that that's something that's at the front. So I'm gonna read a little bit from this article that I pulled up a little earlier. Um, the Secretariat of Environment and Natural Resources here in Mexico Environment Ministry has announced that glyphosate based herbicides will be phased out of use in the country by 2024 to protect human health and environment. Given the scientific evidence of glyphosate toxicity, demonstrating the impacts on human health and the environment, the Secretariat of Environment and Natural Resources has taken important steps to gradually reduce the use of this chemical until it achieves its ban in 2024. I go ahead and skip down here a little bit further. Um, among the actions that have already been taken uh, last November, under the precautionary principle for the prevention of environmental risk, they stopped the import of thousands of tons of glyphosate to Mexico, you guys. That's amazing. So down here in Mexico, they're very aware that they are being poisoned by this and they're taking precautionary steps to remove uh, the chemical from their farming practices and essentially protecting their the health of their farm workers and their families and the people that are eating food down here, which is everybody, um, by reducing this chemical. And so I think it's really important, you know, as you do your research to find out there's places in Europe that are doing similar things to reduce the impact on their health and the health of their country's citizens. So, um, I thought I would bring that to you today as a little bit different point of view. And in this article, there's actually links to the detox project. So if you aren't aware of the detox project, it's a great resource where you can go learn more about glyphosate and the issues it has on our food. But right here, the link that they share from the detox project is um, the, verif the, the validated foods that are tested uh, for glyphosate. And through this website, you can actually get instructions on how you can test your water and your food for glyphosate. That's incredible, right? So um, go check that out. But on their list here, the most prevalent foods that have glyphosate in them um, is that it's in your water, you guys, because it evaporates and it rains back down. So even a lot of organic farmers out there may not know it, but if they have a neighbor down the way, it can drift through the air, which we've heard has been a problem. There's been lawsuits where organic farmers actually get the drift of glyphosate onto their product and they get sued for like having that poison on their organic product when it wasn't even their fault. It drifted through the air. Um, it also evaporates into the air and rains down through the water. So if people are on water catchments or are on any kind of um, public water that might be contaminated, especially around farmlands in Nebraska and in the Midwest, especially. Um, there's definitely lots of other chemicals in the water as well, but this is one of the contaminants that are most worrisome because of the side effects that they cause. Um, the other thing, it's very prevalent in beer and wine. So if you didn't know that, glyphosate is very heavy in alcohol. So be cautious, you know, if you're gonna have that glass of wine, maybe make sure and take your biomedic after. Um, it's in honey a lot because it goes into the pollen, the bees go and collect that pollen and then it ends up in your honey. So, you know, as they're spraying the plants, the bees don't know what fruits or flowers have been sprayed and they're just collecting their honey nectar. And so that ends up in our food as well. Infant cereals, this is something we talk about all the time, you guys. Cheerios has the most parts per billion of glyphosate in it. You can look that up. There's tons of articles that talk about it but especially infant cereals and baby foods, you guys. This is very worrisome because mostly there's a millions of people out there that don't know this and they are unknowingly feeding this to their children. So our job as part of the Million Mom Movement is to go out there and educate and share what we know because people that don't know, I mean, we don't know what we don't know, right? And so we all have to teach each other and that's part of why we're all here today. The other thing that has a high amount of glyphosate are whole oats, wheat, corn, soybeans, and it's in a lot of the soil. So like I said earlier, if you're an organic farmer and you're planting your organic seeds in chemical laden soil, you're 
vegetables that grow out of that are no longer going to have the same quality as it would if that soil wasn't contaminated with that poison glyphosate. So um, we started a petition a little over a year ago, and originally it was a letter writing petition to General Mills, the maker of Cheerios and many other baby foods and um, children's snacks. And so we wanted to ask them to remove the ingredients that contain glyphosate from their foods, starting with Cheerios, because we know that Cheerios is an easy finger food for small babies. It's the first thing that many of us feed our babies because it's, you know, easy. You get a big box of it. If you have a small baby, that box will last you forever. <laughs> and especially if you're giving it to them as finger foods. So, um, and then we continue to feed it to our children throughout their lifetime, right? And maybe we even eat it ourselves. It's put on the shelf as a heart healthy cereal, you guys. I used to buy it my own self for my children until I learned better. And so we started a letter writing campaign and we realized that as busy moms, letter writing just goes on the back burner and sometimes never happens. Or if it does happen, we were getting stock replies from them. Nobody was actually reading the letters and replying with an actual heartfelt response. And so we decided to pivot and make a petition because we found that petitions are a lot simpler. You enter, you just, it's the click of a button, right? It takes you two seconds. You enter your email and your first and last name or whatever they want. And you literally have signed that petition. So I believe we're closing in on our thousand signatures and we would love to have your help in collecting more signatures and getting to our thousand mark. So that we can send this letter to General Mills, this petition, um, and go ahead and send that request in that we have at least a thousand concerned citizens that would like to see Cheerios safe <clears throat> free. Another thing is that we did notice that Kellogg's had come out with an article saying that they were going to remove glyphosate by 2025. And as moms, that's just not fast enough. I mean, even down here in Mexico, I'm saying 2024, that's in, that, there's three more years, three or four more years before that law actually passes or that they actually phase it out. So for three more years, people are being poisoned here by this chemical. So it's our job to um, vote with our dollar is very important. Buy the things that are glyphosate free, glyphosate residue free has been a new label that's coming out and um, spread the word, help more of your friends sign the petition, help more of your friends join us for Fierce Friday here. And um, it's my honor to share this information with you all. So we'll go ahead and post that petition link. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you for listening to that. I know everybody was on the edge of their seats listening to you share from from Mexico this time, right? Like some of us have heard the Hawaii story. You kind of sprung us, you sprung some new information on us there, sister. I'm really grateful. That was good. That was really good. If you learned something new out of what Nayeva just shared, drop a two. Drop a two if you got new knowledge. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, absolutely. Did we drop a link for the water testing site? Did that get in? I just want to make sure that we're covering all the bases. Jody's getting slammed with recreating the conversation in text and then all the, the links too. So Jody, thank you for, for doing that. Um, yeah, fantastic. That's the promise of us every Friday, right? Is that you come here and our promise and our commitment is to bring you education, information, awareness to make you a more conscious consumer out in the field so that you can make better decisions for yourself and your family right? That's that conscious relationship, even to brands and companies and what we're buying. Consciousness. It's the word of the year. Um, so yeah, really, really great information there, Nayeva. And the petition has been posted. Listen, we, who, who said we should be at like 500,000 signatures? That was, that was very true. Who said, who said that? Um, but yeah, we really should. These, this is not um, a benign conversation. Even people who, Celeste, thanks Dollface, even people who may not understand that Purium's the best choice for them for their foods yet or the solutions, even people who aren't showing up here every week on uh, a Fierce Friday call, you can share this with everybody. Everybody can sign this petition. This is for anybody. And if you read the language of the petition, we were very deliberate and much kudos to my sister Nayeva for co-creating that um, petition with me. We were deliberate about our language inviting 
General Mills into a conversation with us. Can you imagine if a company like General Mills got to hang out with Dave Sandoval for a couple hours to learn about maybe some new ways they could do things in their um, processing, right? Like, who knows? We're the ones bridging that. So thank you very much, Nayeva, and um, everyone for holding the space for that conversation. Um, I was I was concerned for a minute there because I had lost my space and I didn't see Taz in the in the list of participants and I started freaking out texting Carmel like where's Taz but she wasn't on there so Rachel I just want to make sure that all of the council are right now co-hosts on the call in case they need to do any sharing or maneuvering can we make sure Taz is added as a as a co-host my friend thank you so much appreciate you um all right great so Definitely take that petition, uh, spread it out into your communities, use it as a talking piece. You know, I invite you to look at how sharing the movement and the actions and activities of the movement, the Million Mom movement, are leveraging points of conversation for those of you who are out to make a difference as Million Mom movement partners, as Purium brand partners. These are, are conversations that are, are door openers to begin making education and awareness available out in your community and establishing for yourself, um, yourself as a credible agent of transformation that they can count on because you've got the Million Mom Movement and Purium Health products at your back. Um, so thank you for that. Let's jump in to the topic of the hour. And um, it is with great honor that I introduce Carmela and Taz as uh, my partners on the council who are very committed to deepening not only their own effectiveness in conscious relationships, but you know, you become good at what you teach. Yeah. So they're not only here to give you what they know, but in sharing with you growing themselves and growing into the field, um, the gift of conscious relationships. So ladies, I am going to mute myself and turn the microphone over to you and bless you for creating this dialogue for the field. Thank you, Rebecca. And hello, everyone. So conscious partnerships. So I'm delving into how to use these conscious relationships that you have in your life as spiritual catalysts for change, for growth, your own personal growth. And these partnerships exist to help you, your partner and the world around you at large to grow and transform. So that's such a great topic for us in the Million Mom Movement because we are relationships-based business and it's an industry. And at this time in history, when the world is in transformation and in this golden age of Aquarius, I believe humanity is feeling a deep intuitive need to cleanse stale, negative, and unhealthy energy. And it seeks a new way to live in harmony. So why are we all here as a transformation company too? It's because we are catalysts for others change. But by healing our own lives through our relationships, we heal the world around us and our ancestral lineage. So that's a little deeper than we might, we might wanna go on this particular day. Um, but February is self-worth, self-love, self-respect month. It's a self-love month. How can we not talk about this as moms on a mission? And I want to reflect on how the Million Mom has brought to me my husband. <laughs> it brought him back home and I didn't have him home. I helped him retire from one of his careers to really be focused on being a full-time father. And that to me is everything. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without the support and my backing. And my kids are so much happier and healthier because they see a father. And so it brought me back my family. And that's why I was so passionate to share this topic. And, um, and doing all of that while being able to focus on my dream, raising a healthy family is what we want to do. We want to help you. So I'm gonna be focusing on specifically partnerships and that can go into the world of brand partnerships because some of you are brand partners. It could go into the world of soulmates, twin flames if we're gonna talk about that too. But it's in general and then I'm gonna pass it to Taz and she and I decided to pass this topic because in the Million Mom movement, there's also a part of relationships that are about parenting. 
So take it away. Thank you so much, Carmela. Okay, so when we, were, we started brainstorming about this topic, parenting, this is what speaks to me loud and clear, conscious parenting and what that means and what that means from what we eat, how we behave and how we live because this is a lifestyle. So conscious parenting for me means to understand your children as independent beings who can teach parents to become more self-aware. So I'm going to be discovering this topic later today. I'm gonna to take it to you, Carmela. Start like diving in and tell us a little bit about it. Awesome, Taz. I love this. So I'm gonna start with a transpersonal therapist saying, his name is Mistelberger. He says the most difficult of all forms of inner work is relationship work or interpersonal processing. And its goal is to create mature, awakened and dynamic relationships. And that creates the major changes in our own lives. So if we want to grow, we do have to do the inner work through relationship work. That is the deepest form of work. So um, I, as I shared a little bit about my back history of being a, being a part of the Million Mom movement has always been something I have led with because I was super attracted to the idea of Purium being able to put family first, you know, having a, ch a children's line, having um, education, and, and really also network marketing space, as a mom working, you really do need the support of having the company support you. And so in Perium, I, it's helped me to ground my dreams. And as a woman, as a human being who wants to expand herself, I always thought that if it's not without partnership, I'm only as good as that. And I know that collaboration is a continuum. It's on a continuum line. You don't know where that relationship started, but you don't know where it's gonna go either because it's all there to teach you. And so three questions that I have started this topic with are, and you might wanna write notes and might delve into it as a, a sort of workshop form, but do you personally have a business life plan for yourself? And this is a self-love practice that I invite you to ask and consider for yourself. Do you have a life plan, a business plan? for yourself. And I honestly shared this because first, because I have one with my husband. We talk about this. We discuss this over dinner, over a date. You know, these are the topics that we are in bed and thinking about, but we need to talk about it. And these types of strategic life plans, like you can't just throw it against the wall, hope it sticks. You're going to want to make sure that you are in the process, in the processing with the partner that you're with. Two, do you have a support system? Maybe it's not a partner, but maybe it is. Maybe it's a soulmate and confident and teacher where you feel safe to grow, to express yourself, and you know that you can count on them. Because this is a part of conscious relationships. Do you have a support system to grow your business? Because in my eyes, when I first got enrolled, I recall my enroller saying, you know, do you have, um, how does your husband feel about um, the work that you're doing? And you know, that was a good question, you know, because maybe I hadn't asked him at that point yet. <laughs> um, maybe I did. Um, but this is so important to have a circle of support, your inner circle. Number three, is your current partner aware of your work? <laughs> this is what I was just asking in network marketing. And what is your why? And do they know your goals? Are they your true accountability partner in life? because that might be a partner that is home and who is your partner, but do they know your goals in your personal life, in your professional life? Do they know where you wanna go? Are you discussing this? Is it a true accountability partnership? And so there's a specific book that I love, um, I've been reading, it's called Twin Flames and Soulmates by Luna and Soul. I'm gonna be referencing a few. Um, and there are three ways a soulmate or twin flame can actually catalyze profound change in your life. And one, it's self-transformation, which is, I think, a path that most of us really truly want to be on is we want growth, personal growth. Two is transformation in others. Maybe you're a coach, maybe you're a mom. This is the transformation in others. But of course, the, the first one is self, right? Self and then others. And the third is the global world. Maybe your mission, maybe this mission. <laughs> so this is why it's such an important topic to me to discuss 
relationships and soulmates. Soulmates could not necessarily be a love interest. It could mean a best friend. It could be that teacher that came into your life that sparked you to realize you wanted to go to holistic lifestyle. You wanted to go into health coaching. You really were passionate about understanding the activism portion of what we're doing here. And so the question is, how do you know you're even in a healthy relationship? How do you know you're in a conscious relationship? So I'm going to go through some things um, that maybe you could check off boxes of your own as I'm saying them. Maybe you can't. And that's the area you're going to work on. So do you see you both as equals? Are you both willing to compromise in healthy ways? So in healthy ways is the parentheses. Um, are you heard, not just listened to? Because that's a two-way streak. And again, partnerships is 50-50. It's not 70-30. It's like 50-50. Meet each other halfway. Um, you both are try your best to resolve conflicts. That's a good one. Because how many people are trying their very best and the other person just doesn't care or doesn't even see it as a conflict. And so it never gets resolved. So this is something where are you actively together working on a resolve for conflict? You, do you celebrate each other's achievements or are you competitive with one another? This is another aspect of healthy versus unhealthy. Um, codependent versus independent, right? And this, it's a very, un, you know, it's a deeper understanding of where are you at right now? Take stock. Um, are you both free to give a compliment and affection to one another openly and just on the fly, like it feels good? Can you be honest with one another? Is authenticity encouraged? You both invite growth and change within each other and you share similar life goals and values. I mean, I can go on, but these are the top. And I listed some major reasons of unconscious patterns. So what are some unconscious patterns, right? So these are things that you might wanna think about your brand partnerships as well as your partners. So again, this is general partnerships in life and what is healthy and unhealthy because what we wanna do is self-correct, right? We wanna find homeostasis, we wanna find balance, we wanna find self-love. And if you don't create the boundary for yourself to create the environment in which that is most um, welcomed in and ushered in, then how can we? So one, do we impose our desires and expectations and beliefs on others? Number two, we struggle to communicate openly. Number three, we project childhood traumas onto others. And of course, this could be, you know, subconscious, but if it's happening and you're not resolving the conflict and sharing with a person and that doesn't seem to register, yeah, sorry, the list is going quickly. <laughs> um, and then the last one, we lack authentic self-love. And again, it always comes back to that. So I'm just going to give you a few tips of mine um, because I felt, well, I'm addressing what is healthy versus unhealthy, you know, and why it's so important to consider this for our own growth here in the Million Mom movement, because we all do want to become more conscious consumers, conscious lovers, conscious organizers, and business partners. So visualizations. So how can we shift into this new, more conscious way of being if it wasn't conscious? Well, um, vision boarding your life, creating a business life plan with those partners, creating cleansing meditations. And I have this one that I even do whenever um, some kind of trauma happens to my children, like they hurt themselves. And I say, well, close your eyes, imagine your favorite animal. Imagine this favorite animal going into this garden, this beautiful garden, what does it look like? How does it feel? Okay, now what colors do you see? Sit down in the grass. Go to the water. You see there's a little pond of water nearby. And then I say, um, well, take the little water and, and uh, put it on your skin. How does it feel? Is it cold? Is it hot? Put it in your hair. How does it feel to you then? How about drink it? And then that's the cleansing because what you're going to do, and then you say to the spirit animal, take this pain that I have and see the animal walk in deeper into the garden and then go into the pond. And then it literally takes, this is a little visualization I learned from a book. I have to post these books. <laughs> I don't know where, uh, maybe on the Million Mom Movement official page, but I have so many great meditation visualizations, healing family trauma, healing families. Um, Taz and I have a lot. And then 
Affirmations. I want to go through some affirmations. Now, what, what do affirmations do? They modify energy patterns. And if no one has heard of Louise Hay, please look her up. I highly recommend this book, Heal Your Life, Heal Your Body. This woman is an incredible affirmation um, author. So today, I am worthy of nourishing partnerships who fuel my growth. I am empowered to expand myself by being my most honest self to those I choose. I am willing to ask for help when I need it. I am strong and confident and asking for help allows others to contribute to my success. I am willing to help others by allowing others to help me. And I allow balance into my life. So I'm gonna pass the mic over to Taz and I really wanna invite you to look into those beloveds with a lens of love this February and then look into the lens of love for you. Take stock of you and really see where you are with the relationships that you currently have in your life. So Taz, take it away. I would love to hear more about what you think about with conscious parenting since you're such a great role model. Thank you so much. Because So this is the perfect bridge into this, okay? Because as you see, conscious relationship is on all levels from your spouse to your partner, to your brand partners, to your kids. So while building my period business and planning fundraiser events at school, I had so many of the same questions. People were always asking me, how do you do it? How do you get your kids to be so calm? How do you get your kids to eat healthy? How do I get? I didn't, you know, at the beginning, I didn't think much of these questions because you know what? I didn't think I was doing anything really different. But when I started sharing, I started realizing I was doing something completely different than anyone else. You know, at the tender age of three, when my daughter was three, so it was a lot while ago, I heard parents always talking about the terrible twos. And then they would say, you know, it continues on to terrible threes. But I had no idea what they were talking about. I had never experienced such a thing. I would give my daughter breathing techniques as a baby on how to become aware, aware of her environment, of her body, of herself, of her emotions. And little did I understand at the moment that what I was doing was happening on the cellular level. And then I started noticing that kids want to be listened to, understood, supported, and when this connection is strong, kids are more likely to listen and understand. And, you know, I try in my... I'm serve being quiet. An approach I use was every morning before my kids start school, I would light a candle and I would have them watch that flame, watch the way that flame flickered in stillness. And the longer they did that, they, their body, you could see their body remain calm and they had this sense of stillness and they went into school with this awareness. And you know what I was in fact doing? It was resetting their entire nervous system without them even knowing it. And, you know, there's so many things that we think of with our kids, right? One thing that I noticed, well, I think this is one of the number one things is triggers. You know, when something happens, like your kids throw something on the floor or they throw themselves on the floor, but before they react, they look to see how you react. Have you noticed that? Or when your kids eat something and they spit it out, are they spitting it out because they don't like the taste or are they spitting it out and looking to see your reaction? Do you laugh? Are you angry? How do you behave in that moment? So that millisecond of reaction sets the trigger in motion. 
what I found is when my kids fell, they just waited for my reaction. And if I was like, oh, are you okay? I was calm. You know what happened? They were calm. They didn't cry because I didn't freak out. If I was like, ah, you know, are you okay? Then they would start crying. They react how you react. Think about that. Here we are wondering how such little people can be so complex, but they are. So speak to your children in a respectful way. Manage your expectations. Work on your issues and self-awareness. Consider creating a daily routine, which I love. Keep your children's age in mind. Treat your children as individuals. Show empathy and compassion. And the best one yet, leading by example. So with the peering economy, this has given me time freedom to actually be with my kids, showing them skills, how to build relationships. And we all want to be heard, to let, to let go of the outcome and to focus on the present, to trust, surrender, and to be consistent. You are giving your kids absolutely skills for life. And all of these decisions, these are making their lives better. And that starts off with good habits and great examples. This is why I take such honor when I read the pledge, because we are setting good examples for our children. And what they're choosing to eat and how that's making them feel to understand the differences between thriving and just feeling, you know? You just eat. A lot of kids just eat out of an emotion that they don't even associate. This is not thriving. So now we are giving them this ability, this awareness of what's happening in their body. And what I love to do is to give our kids independence at a young age. So let me, let me tell you about an exercise that I do with my kids. I started this since they were very little. We would go to Starbucks. We would go to Starbucks. And when they were little kids, and you know, they would sh be shorter than the counter, okay? I always like to do this when they were very small. I would pick an area of Starbucks that I would be near the door and I would be facing the barista. And I would see my kids clearly. And at that time they sold raw, raw dehydrated apples. And my kids always loved to get uh, steamed almond milk with some cinnamon. So I gave them my phone with the Starbucks app and I'm like, okay, go ahead and order. And I'm watching them from afar. So they're not next to me. And they, when it was their turn and the barista was asking them a question, first of all, the barista would look around to see who's the parent. And once she catches my eye, she knows that my child is safe. So I, my daughter or my son, they would be struggling to get their point across what they wanted to order. And I love that because they needed to show how to be heard. They needed to deliver with posture and independence and pride and work harder, right? Sometimes if the barista didn't understand them and they were small, they had to push forward. And you know, you know what happened? When they delivered an order and they got their order, they took such pride in that order. So this made them proud of themselves. So we give them these skills to set them up for life. And for me, that's the ultimate love I can ever give my kids. And when we start seeing our kids, this is how I see my kids. My kids are my biggest teachers and we have a huge responsibility. And that starts at connecting the dots. Food is beyond food. We are creating healthy habits, bringing the level of awareness and consciousness into their lives into their bodies, it's a way of life. And these are skills. And when we start showing and being the example as leaders for our family, we are creating the ultimate ferocious movement of many. And Carmela and I, we have a little surprise for you at the end. I don't know if you wanna talk about it now, Carmela. Go ahead, share it while we're on this topic. 
Well, we wanted to share with you, Carmela and I are launching Conscious Relationships. We are launching the Conscious Relationships with the books we're reading because my favorite book is actually The Five Love Languages for Kids. Have you guys read this book? Conscious Parenting by Shafali and The Five Love Languages for Kids. There's also um, an, an adult version of this with your spouse. I love the kids one as well because now we get to understand the relationship with our kids and how we can better love them and how they can be better heard. Yes, and so some so of the books- I open the topic up. Go ahead. Yeah. And some of the books that we were also sharing. So Taz shared The Conscious Parent by Shefali Tazbury, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Five Love Languages for Adults and for Children. And kids, yes. And then I spoke today about Twin Flames and Soulmates. Yes. And then the last, uh, there's two more. Healing Family Patterns, Ancestral Lineage Clearing for Personal Growth. I love this one. This is great. And the last one was What Great Parents Do. 75 oh, yes. Strategies for Raising Kids That Thrive. So in our online course that you can, um, you can join, um, it's six weeks and we're going into each of these books and then we're gonna have a website for um, a Facebook page that we're gonna be doing homework and workshops and it's demystifying conscious relationships. So tap on either one of us if you're interested to learn and we open up the mic to anyone who might have any yeah. questions or wanna talk about a topic that's related to this. I don't know if, uh, Rebecca, you want to moderate if you see hands up or if there are questions in the chat. Um, is this a cost? Is this, a, is this the, is the question, is there a charge for what you're offering? Yes. The Facebook okay. group is not, but we do want you to take a look at the online course because that's what we're going to be really getting all of the information together, um, talking about the course itself on. Okay. Great. So we will, we'll talk as a, a council on how to share that appropriately. And you guys will get more information into the field. Okay. Um, it is 10 minutes to the hour. And my dear Nayeva is going to speak to us one more time. And um, Nayeva, you're going to share with us, you know, what you've heard today is a good part of what happens in conversation when you are mentored in this business. They liked, we like to say in the network marketing industry that it is a personal development opportunity that happens to come with a paycheck opportunity, right? So you are going to, as Carmela and Taz have said, you're going to press up against all of your relationship buttons with your brand partnership, being in the movement, sharing education, sharing awareness, taking a stand, being an activist, uh, healing your family, there's going to be a uh, rubber meeting the road opportunities. And so your personal strength and development matter and how we can work with you and work together is inviting you into the opportunity to be a brand partner with us. And the Million Mom Movement actually has an opportunity for you to become a brand partner on a scholarship. So Nayeva, would you take a few minutes to talk about the scholarship, what it entails, and how our good people can learn more about being one of the cool people that they see standing for clean living and transformation. Of course, this is my honor to share more about our scholarship opportunity. This is something that we started offering a little over a year ago for families in need of financial and nutritional support. And so if you know anybody that fits that description, we'd love to invite them to apply for our Million Mom Movement Scholarship through our millionmommovement.info website. And what our scholarship entails is unlimited personal development and support from our leadership Imperium. Um, we have lots of support calls. And so right here, you can see on the screen um, that it, who qualifies? Families, people with a dependent, and you receive a business, it is a business scholarship with nutritional support. So you're getting $199 business pack along with approximately $400 worth of superfoods per month. We have made a couple changes to our scholarship 
recently um, in alignment with what we've heard back from our own personal scholarship winners and other people in the field. Our six month scholarship was a little bit lengthy and it was a lot of support and a lot of people weren't following through with their requirements. And so we decided to pivot and switch it to three month scholarship, which aligns with a 90 day business run, which we will support you along the way. We've created lots of support tools to help you become successful and in that scholarship during those three months, it really helps you to also reach all of our fast start bonuses that you can qualify for. There's over $2,500 in fast start bonuses when you first get started. And so it really incentivizes those scholarship winners to run for those bonuses and try to make that happen because that is really where we're trying to help people become financially stable and able to afford these superfoods for their own family moving forward. So it's an amazing scholarship. We've had, I think, over 68 scholarship winners so far. Last time I looked at the website, I think now maybe it's like maybe we're at 72 now. Um, so that's a lot of families that we've been able to impact financially and through their health. And you can find all the information on this website that they have up here. It's millionmommovement.info forward slash scholarships. And you will see this exact page pop up with all this information. So um, you can see there, there's a drop down menu as well that you can go to on our site and it goes right to the scholarship page. So um, please go check it out. If you know anybody that could qualify for this, please share that website with them, share more about this opportunity with them. There is a recent post on our Instagram and Facebook about the scholarship as well. So you can also tag people or share that with other people or share it in your stories on Instagram if you'd like to. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am the social media coordinator. And so um, we, we have a page on Facebook, Million Mom Movement. We also have a group on Facebook. It's millionmommovement.info. And we'd love all, or Million Mom Movement um, official, excuse me. That's the group on Facebook. And you can join that group and become a part of our community. We wanna encourage you to, if you've been participating in PHP Lives and you would like to share your stories in there, please share them into that group. And if you're somebody that hasn't been participating in that amazing opportunity to get extra business points, then I wanna encourage you because it's a safe space inside of that group where everybody in there is part of our movement. So take down any of that fear that you have about going live, just be yourself, go in the Million Mom Movement official and go live with your PHP Live 2021 hashtag and have at it, share what it is that you're passionate about, share what it is that's, that's inspiring you right now or share about this Fierce Friday and what you've learned, something, maybe some of your takeaways and that will count towards business credit on your account. So um, make sure and use the hashtag when you go live and the other platforms that we have is we have a Twitter account. We also have an Instagram account, which is where I frequent the most. Um, they're under at Million Mom Movement, so you can find us there. And any time you wanna post and get reposted, you can just use the hashtag Million Mom Movement or hashtag I am the Million Mom Movement or the hashtag We Are the Million Mom Movement. Those are the three hashtags that I look for on our social media. You can also tag me in your stories and I will reshare them to our stories on the Million Mom Movement page on Instagram. And that goes over to our Facebook stories as well. And um, yeah, it's my honor to be able to share information and education through that platform and to also reshare your stories and what it is that you all are passionate about. So thank you for tagging me on those posts and making my job amazingly easier by just being able to share what you all are passionate about because we're all in this movement together and you all are a part of the Million Mom Movement because we are the Million Mom Movement. Thank you all for being here today. I'm passing it back to you. Yeah. Don't you just love Nayeva? I could just listen to Nayeva talk on and on and on. Bless your heart, girl. Thank you for the heart and passion you bring in to all of the social media. If you are already following us, drop a four. Drop a four in the so in your in the comments. If you are following us and you are getting value from the Instagram, I mean, I love the Instagram stuff you do. Our Facebook presence. Like if we're getting value and listen, when you tag 
million mom movement, then she's grabbing your post and then posting you so that everyone in the movement that sees the movement is seeing you. What a great way to build your own personal identity, image, brand name, right? It's you that people want to do business with. Super, super great. All right. We're coming to a close. I just want to announce a couple of things. Um, next Monday, sorry, Monday in the Million Mom Movement official group that Nayeva just mentioned, um, Jody is going live to launch the Family Nutrition Pack Makeover. So be ready. Uh, Jody, if you know, have a time in mind of doing that, would you mind dropping it? And then on the 19th, next Friday, our Fierce Friday is going to be a support call, recipes, tips, information about the superfoods that are in the Family Nutrition pack to give you extra support for the journey that we're on. But in the middle is Wednesday. And on Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, I will be leading the monthly Million Mom Movement Business Power Hour. This originally was a training for scholarship recipients, but it is for everyone in the field. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be getting down with it this Wednesday. We're going to do an hour call. We're going to talk about the networking industry, what it is, the kinds of companies in it, the company that Purium is in it and the Purium economy, what this opportunity is distinctly and the Million Mom Movement as a fellow force field behind you with this work. And then we're going to talk about how you make this yours. How do you personalize the mission? What are the movements you create within the movement that brand and label yourself as someone for people to know? So share, 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 let people know about this training. This is for everybody in the field. This is even for people who are like, do I want to be a Perium brand partner? I don't know. Let me see how they really act. Okay. You're come on, come to one of our trainings. Let me show you how we really act. Right. And uh, in the meantime, spread the word that more people are welcome. Come back next week. Bring a couple people with you. This is for everyone. And I'm so grateful to Taz and Carmela who presented our main topic today. And for Nayeva who always shines when she shares with us her knowledge and Jody on the keys and Rachel at corporate and all of you in the field, you get love and you get love and you get love. I feel like Oprah, you get love and you get love. All right. For real though, we really do appreciate you. And it's always great to have this hour. Remember you can check out our YouTube channel to see all of these calls on replay, spread the word. You are the million mom movement. Thanks everybody. Peace.